Hey there guys, Mike here. Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection is back with a Western Roundup update. I love doing the Western Roundup update because I love Westerns. That's right guys. Ever since I've gotten older, I've really just plum crazy went crazy for Westerns, I guess you could say, you know. Uh, but I've really discovered a lot of cool stuff. But anyways guys, these are just some pickups. Uh, these are some, uh, most of these... I would say these are all new new to me. These are all first time watches and, you know, owner bought, you know, it, it's all new. It's all great. So let's get right to that. This is a DVD um, release from uh, Warner Archive. Uh, it's got James Cagney in it. And a really, really interesting movie directed by Robert Wise, of all things. I mean, I don't think he did a lot of Westerns, but he did a quite a few he really did he was really a journeyman director i mean he really did a lot of different genres and really brought a lot of class and stuff to these you know different movies over the over the years and stuff he's done everything from sci-fi to movies to editing citizen kane uh so everything this is a movie i picked up uh, and it's called uh, tribute to a bad man and um this is one of those um I want to say this was 1955, I want to say. But anyways, it's a pretty cool movie. Uh, it's um, James Cagney brings one, one man's justice to the rugged 1870s Rockies. Yeah, let me just read a little bit about this. Um, James Cagney has done a lot of interesting um, later day westerns and stuff um, over the years and i've i've discovered those like um like this um movie directed by um nicholas ray of all people called uh, run for cover and uh it's a good one um but let's talk about this one though uh but anyways uh uh jeremy rodak makes his living by raising horses in the rocky mountain valley that bears his name anyone foolish enough to uh, steal those horses makes his own dying let one buzzard live and he'll pick your bones clean, unquote, uh, ex explains Jeremy, who, with, court, uh, with courtrooms some 200 miles away, uh, dispenses justice his way uh, with a noose. Uh, but that's not the way Jeremy's uh, companion, Joe, uh, played by Irene Pappas, a former honky-tonk queen. Uh, she wants him to change, and there's a greener valley somewhere for her if, sh if he won't. Um, he will. Uh, swayed by Joe and recently arrived tenderfoot from the east, um, will finally realize that justice requires mercy, and there's a lot of good in this bad man. So what I can uh, remember... This movie actually has a uh, Vic Morrow, Stephen McNally, and uh, Don Dubbins in it. Um, pretty, pretty cool, actually. It's very odd, not odd, but just I, I guess it's forgettable. If, if you know, like just a another western from the fifties. I, I don't want to say it like that. James Candy, br uh, James Candy, James Cagney really does bring, um, you know, his talent that he. That's James Cagney, but he's you know he's wearing the whole, wearing the hat. I was always kind of mm, does James Cagney look okay as a cowboy? I mean he's kind of a short statued guy, statured guy, and uh, sometimes he's got a cowboy hat. And I, I don't know. I first saw him in uh, the Oklahoma Kid, you know Warner Brothers, nineteen thirty nine, I think. And I still don't own a copy of that, but um, famously him and I think Humphrey Bogart or Cowboys in that one or something but but yeah this is pretty good this is a movie that you need to kind of watch again you know just because it's not memorable enough to really just say wow this is so great but you know what I'm saying in my inimitable way but yeah tribute to a bad man I had heard of it over the years and everything so yeah it's just one of those movies to discover and rediscover so it's probably be a movie I'll pick up on later down the road uh, like I'm doing now next up I got a couple of really cool releases from this really cool eBay seller um, I'm not sure where the company is or where they get their prints from or what is going on but they always look great uh, they go out of their way to uh, put out some movies mostly from the 50s 
uh, and mostly color productions at that. And uh, they put out some of those more obscure, rare um, westerns and stuff. And they do other stuff too, but but they put out this whole series of them. And it's I guess it's Hollywood Scrap Heap. Uh, they have a website here, what you know, HollywoodScrapHeap.com. But uh, I think if you go on there, it's not much like. I don't know. I've, I've pretty much bought every Western this guy has. So, anyways, I found I found a couple of new ones. This this was a Joel McRae uh, movie that I didn't have when I did my big Joel McRae episode tribute to him with all his movies. I I just now picked this up. Um, this is a movie from 1950, uh, starring also Joel McRae and uh, Shelley Winters called Frenchie. Now, there's different ver uh, import versions of this movie and stuff, but I don't I don't think anybody's ever put it out in the States, per se, like in a collection. Uh, but it's one of those, you know, honky-tonkin' color productions, I believe. I, I want to say it's... I don't think it was Paramount. Was it RKO or... No, it wasn't RKO. I'm not sure what Allied Artist or something, something like that. But anyways, it's a pretty good one. Uh, Frenchie uh, Fontaine sells her successful business in uh, New Orleans to come out west. Her uh, her reason to find a new man to find the men who killed her father, Frank Dawson, but uh, she only knows one of the two who did the deed, and she's determined to find the other and stuff. And uh, Joel McRae is in there, but yeah, it's a good one actually. Uh, Shelly Winters, sometimes I'm okay with her, sometimes not. But a lot of the westerns that she did, she was really good in it, like Winchester 73 and stuff. You know, she, she's been good in them and stuff. So I, I guess I do like her in westerns more than other stuff. Uh, but yeah, Frenchie, pretty cool. Um, I, again, first time watch. Everything, it looks great. It's going to definitely be one to rewatch again because I'm a big fan of Joel McRae. Uh, next up, this is again from the same company. This time, starring one of my favorite character actors and criminally underrated actors of all time, Dan Durier. And uh, this, this one's really weird, like coming across this one. But this one's called Al Jennings of Oklahoma. It's like I had never heard of that. Al Jennings of Oklahoma. Uh, but yeah, it's a little seventy-eight minute movie. Um, Pretty good, actually. I mean, Dan Durier pretty much carries this movie. It's got also got Gail Storm. Uh, she did a lot of movies with Bob Hope uh, or Paramount in the early to mid-40s. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the four Jennings brothers are lawyers. And when, all, when Al has a brother murdered, he goes after the murderer. He outdraws him, but a witness says that it was murder. Escaping the sheriff, he takes refuge on a cattle ranch, only to learn all the hands are rustlers. With a piece of his uh, head, Al, jo Al joins them and becomes an outlaw. His fame grows, Al as does the reward for his capture. So I'm not really sure if this is based on a real character of Al Jennings. I, I, just, I just got a kind of a kick out of the title. It's like Al Jennings of Oklahoma, you know. But yeah, good movie lesser movie um the best thing about it is dan durier of course um so yeah most people may not enjoy because it, it, it's a good movie uh, what i'm trying to say i guess it's it's kind of blandish you know it's a little bland except for dan durier but yeah pretty cool I'm always interested in finding some of these really interesting, kind of rarish 50s westerns and stuff. And I got one more from that company. And this is pretty cool. This has got a great cast in it. And uh, this is from 1955. I believe it was widescreen on here and everything from uh, Paramount, I believe. Uh, but anyways, this is a movie called At Gunpoint. And uh, it's got another uh, character, it's got another actor in here that I've always kind of been like, is, does he look okay as a, as, as, a, as a guy on a horse with the hat and the guns and the, you know, does he look like that? But um, the, movie, the guy I'm talking about is Fred McMurray. Um, but, but how this one works out, he's really not a cowboy on a horse with a hat. He's really, he's a townsman. He works, he runs a, uh, I believe he runs the local hardware store grocery store or something like that and it's it's pretty interesting it was a lot better than i thought it was going to be 
Uh, Jack Wright, uh, played by Fred McMurray, is a uh, peace-loving owner of a general store in the quiet town of Plainview, Texas. A town so docile that the marshal hasn't fired his weapons in five years. This all changes when the Dennis gang decide to rob the town bank and gun the marshal down. Uh, Frank Wright, who uh, has no idea how to how to shoot or even handle firearms, becomes the town hero when he picks up the uh, marshal's gun and hits a uh, one in a million shot that puts the leader of out of, of the gang out of commission. Uh, the adoring town soon uh, deserts their new hero, though, as they fear uh, uh, the threatened return of the uh, the bandits. The guys would come back. Uh, it's got a great cast, Fred McMurray, uh, Dorothy Malone, always good in westerns, and the the inimitable, greatest, crankety old character actor guy, Walter Brennan, is in this. So it's really, it's got a great little cast. He's good in it. So basically, there's a robbery happen. Fred McMurray's being Fred McMurray, and somehow or another, um, he, the guy gets shot. He's holding a gun, but somebody else did it. They all think he's the hero that he single-handedly stopped these this bank robbery and everything, and it's like one of those things where it's like, kind of like Hell the Conquering Hero, the uh, Preston Sturgis movie where you get like a mistaken identity all through the movie. The whole everybody joins the you know him. They're rallying around him everywhere, you know, and stuff. And that's kind of what that is. And they build him up to this status. So this gang gets wind of this that you know he did this and he did that. So they come back to challenge him, and um, and then at that point, which is probably the harshest part of the movie, is how the townspeople treat him and his family, and they want him to they they would rather them move out of the, you know pay for their business and just move out of town so they won't come back and hurt us or something. So but you know and then it comes down to that point where you got to really pull out some you know. You know, you got to pull out that that moment. That moment comes in you know, everything, and it's it's really good actually. It's it's a lot better than I you know was going to think about it. Uh, at first, I thought maybe it would be Fred McMurray riding around on a horse and stuff, but he he's, he wears a cowboy hat and he looks good in it. But he's mostly a towns guy. He's just he's just a basic Joe, you know, just peace loving. He's got a nice, beautiful wife. He's got a good tow headed kid. Runs a successful business. People like him. But yeah, pretty cool at gunpoint. Next up, this was a movie I've been trying to watch forever. Uh, heard about this. This is part, kind of part of that new, uh, the 1970s, like revisionist westerns that kind of blew up in the early, early 70s and stuff. And there was all kinds of really interesting westerns um, that came out around that time and pushing the subject matter and language and different stuff, you know. Uh, but this is a movie called um, Kid Blue. And it's from uh, 1973, I believe. And uh, it stars uh, Dennis Hopper, uh, Warren Oates, Peter Boyle, Ben Johnson, uh, Janice Rule. I mean, great cast. Love Warren Oates, Ben Johnson, loving him more and more every year. He's just, so, he was such a great actor figure in these movies and peter boyle really showing some showing some of his acting chops because peter boyle is very underrated you know uh but anyways this is pretty interesting uh, it's hard to explain i don't i guess i don't have time to really explain it to you uh but uh dennis hopper is basically this aimless guy you know and he was going to be in a life have a life of crime but somehow or another he gets sidetracked and he starts becoming a, a reputable citizen and da 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 uh, a lot of interesting thing i i liked it a lot actually it's really good uh, but i believe this is the only way to get it is this um, 20th century fox made on demand dvd that came out because it's not on blu-ray and um, there's not any other dvd editions of this so it's really a really rare one I had to pay a little bit more than normal but it's really pretty good though but if you if you love the revisionist 70s you know take off with wild bunch and uh, you know all, all the good movies that kind of came in the 70s and just 
blew up you know peck and paw and everybody uh you really love this it's really it's really interesting and cool and i had a good time for almost mm, hour and 40 minutes you know it was, it was a good movie next up i just watched this the other night and uh, i had forgotten about this somehow i definitely forgot that walter hill directed this and um why i hadn't already found it you know watched it but uh i i Really kind of remember when it came out 1995 um, I wasn't so much into westerns then I mean I loved Unforgiven in 1992 and went to the movies and saw it and everything I liked westerns but at that at that point I was limited you know I've seen some of the good ones Searchers and Stagecoach and stuff like that you know and everything but uh during that time period i wasn't really a big western watcher i guess and this one just kind of slipped in and slipped out and everything uh but yeah 1995's wild bill uh starring uh, ellen barkin and jeff bridges again another great jeff bridges performance i mean he is just he is he's well fast becoming one of my favorite actors of all time he's just he does so many interesting movies he's a lot of them are have turned into classics he's just got this swagger about him this thing about him he looks great with long hair uh the cowboy hat he's just he's got he's he's got the whole character down you know and uh, it's really good um kind of a like i said walter uh, hill directed it it's got everybody from uh, uh christina applegate from married with children uh, it's got a very crazed zany goofy performance by david arquette and um and so he's got some great character actors in it um uh, I, can't, I hate it when they write this stuff like this but anyways yeah pretty cool uh walter here i can barely read that it's the color of the font against the the case but anyways yeah it's an hour and 55 minutes came out in 1995 and I really like this. It's kind of cool. I mean, it, it tells the story of uh, uh, Wild Bill Hickok. Um, and it, the way it's directed, it's told in some, like, flashbacks and stuff. Uh, it's not, like, lin It's not like straight up like a story. It just starts off as a story. It kind of, like, it kind of has these chopped moments where it's, like, memories telling stories about Wild Bill. Uh, there's a great character actor in this that kind of plays a buddy of his or something, and He's kind of the old coot character, and uh, he's he's great. God, I can't think of his name. You know his face when you see him, but anyways. But anyways, Wild Bill is really good, and I, I, I did. I liked it a lot. I, I never. I don't really hear people talk about it, though. It's like, is it good? Is it bad? What do other people think? So let me know in the comments if you've seen this. And finally, guys, this was a... Uh, this is a Paramount DVD. This is a first time watch. I had never seen this before. Do not believe it's on Blu-ray or anything. Uh, but this is uh, 1957's The Lonely Man. Uh, uh, starring Jack Palance and um, uh, Anthony Perkins, of all people. And uh, really good. Uh, I mean, really good. I mean, Jack Palance gives kind of an intense performance, as always. Um Anthony Perkins is uh, kind of out to get him. He wants to he wants to take him out, and they they learn to they learn to get to get work together and stuff. And it's it's a really cool movie, different movie, uh, directed by Henry Levin. Uh, it's also got Neville Brand and. Uh, yeah so yeah it's pretty good uh, but see i only saw it one time it's uh 87 minutes it's not very long um but yeah it's good I, I i would watch it again it's just um oh that's it jack palance is that's his dad anthony yeah, anthony perkins yeah, realizes that's his dad, and he's he's kind of against him and all this stuff and everything. But yeah, I need to rewatch this again because that is really good. Um, I was gonna say just on a side note, uh, 1957. Uh, where what am I? What is that movie? I just rearranged all this stuff the other day. Um, gosh, there's another movie that 
Anthony, per it's, it's another way. Oh, wait a minute. It's on the tip of the tongue. It's getting ready to come out by Arrow. It's got a Henry Fonda, Anthony Perkins. Um, oh, gosh. What is the name of that? I know I have it on DVD. What is that movie called? For God's sakes, tell me. Oh, The Ten Star. Uh, Anthony Perkins uh, did The Ten Star the same year, 1957, with uh, Henry Fonda. But yeah, that's coming out on a uh, Blu-ray from Arrow Video, which I pre-ordered. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. That's it. Um, just some just some new uh, new stuff to me for sure, and uh, a couple of get back in there and rewatch those again and, uh, and everything. So yeah, thanks thanks for watching. Please comment and uh, all that good stuff. And um, I got to ride out, guys. And um, I'll see you guys next time for another Western Roundup update. Later, guys.